Good morning, America. Steve Ison here. It's Friday, May 11th, here in South Carolina. We're in the Casey Metro area next to the airport. And this morning, our featured speaker is Phil Black. He's running for the 2nd Congressional District. And Phil, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Steve. It's and a pleasure it, to be here. This is not first, the first time Phil's been here, but he is getting closer to the election. Now, we'll tell you, at this point in time in history, and looking back, maybe they've set a date, but we're not exactly sure when the election's coming up because uh, things are a little bit fluid because of changes we've had recently. But hey, it's, it's a great day in South Carolina, in Lexington County especially, and it's going to be a most interesting presentation that Phil Black has in a few minutes. But remember, this is a nonpartisan group. Uh, all people are welcome to come every Friday at 7 a.m. here in Casey. But again, if you're coming through South Carolina, please come by and visit us here at the center part of the state. Freedom lives here in South Carolina. It lives here in Casey. And it lives here with the Casey Mafia. Until next week, Steve Ice signing off. Thanks. Thank you. Our featured guest uh, is someone who's running, all of you are familiar with the room, I think, running for Congress. And this is, I think, Phil's third time to run for office. But but uh, Mr. Phil Black, he's an entrepreneur, <coughs> business leader, uh, words and actions match. Uh, he's running for the 2nd Congressional District in the U.S. Congress. And I'd like to introduce Mr. Phil Black. Steve Phil Black. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Of course, like you, Steve says, it's not my first time here, but my message is the same as it was in 08, 10, and today. I have not changed. I'm saying yesterday, today, and I'll be the same tomorrow. I will not be an individual who votes just the party line. I vote what's the best. I'm not running against Joe Wilson. I'm running for the people in District 2. We started out with the Bible, okay? This is where our country was founded. Then, from the Bible, came our Constitution. Congress does not really, I guess you'd say, honor the Constitution now. It's feel good. It's what they want. My sign says it best. Back to the basics. I will stay there. And we were talking a while ago, and someone brought up the point about the retirement program within Congress. I have a pledge to the people in District 2. We, look at, we want term limitation. I will stay only four years. If you can't get it done in four years, you need to come home. I will stay with a salary of $38,000, not the 164. My retirement will not be as it is now. I will only stay with my retirement program that I have. I'll stay with my insurance program. But the most, and I guess the most important thing, we look at who is running Washington today. It is not Congress. It is the lobbyists. There are three things in Washington that I guess you say will get us where we are now. The first is greed. Very, very nasty thing, but it's in Washington. It's first class in Washington. Second is academia. It's the smart people who say, okay, no child left behind. It's a wonderful thing. All the children in the United States should be equal at grade four. It don't work. Teachers now, all they're doing is teaching the test so they can get the kids to make a certain grade so they can please Washington. The Department of Education was founded in 1976, okay? Today, we don't need the Department of Education. Each state should be able to take care and educate their kids. Okay? So we're looking at that. We're looking at um, clunkers, cash for clunkers. It hurt the people who had a car that was paid for. They got a little rebate on it. They got a new car. Now they're losing a new car, so they can't afford it. But it looked good on paper. Then we look at daylight savings time. When I leave the house to go to the store in Barnwell, it's dark. Kids getting on the bus, dark. When I come home from the store, it's dark. So we look, what did we say by daylight savings time? We go on and on and on. But the most dangerous, most dangerous of all, is special interest groups. The special interest groups are running the country. One in particular is the lobbyists. The 15 of the largest corporations pay more in lobbying fees than they do in the federal taxes. So what can we do? What can we do about the lobbyists? I will have a sign in the office that says, no lobbyists allowed. This is where we start. That's how we get back to the basics, we got it. Look at what's causing the problem and address the problem. And the lobbyists right now are the largest problem we have in the United States. So that's my pledge to you as an individual, to you as a voter. All I ask is that um, if it's still going to be June 12th, that y'all come out on June 12th and vote. My, um, I guess you say what I have tried to prove is that one individual can make a difference in this country. My opponent, um, was an individual on what's called captive vote. One individual 
at 12 o'clock at night, actually voted for Captain, the deciding vote, and that was the kiss of death for what I consider a free enterprise in the United States. Not only that was in 05, 06 he voted for the same type of thing that was for Peru, and 07 did the same thing. It is hard to change the spots on a leopard. So all I ask you to do, look at my video, I'll answer any questions you have, and please come out and vote on June 12th. Thank you very much. Now, are there any questions? I'll take any questions from you. <laughs> David, <laughs> I anticipate what you're going to ask. Go ahead. So, uh, would would we have a better standard of living or a worse standard of living if we eliminated all taxes, duties, and tariffs from foreign trade? Let's go a step further, David. To answer the question, the bottom line is, if we had a consumption tax in this country, if we had a consumption tax on all items that were purchased, and we had a free enterprise that we could get back to manufacturing in this country, then yes, it would be. Would I vote for capital? No, I would not have. Okay? I look at free enterprise within the United States, not within the world. You take care of the people at home first, and then you can take care of the world. But we have a lot of problems here. The job's not here. I think last year only 40% of the graduates from college got jobs. They still owe this uh, student loans. Then we look at all the kids out of high school. They don't have jobs. The jobs are not available. When jobs do come back in this country, they're going to be high tech and robotic. So we're not going to need the same labor force. But something happened, I think it was yesterday, which the president came out and he's going to help with the population problem in this country. He is also endorsing that um, all men, men, women, women should be married. And therefore, he has come out saying that he will help with the overpopulated United States. So, so are there any other questions? How do you feel about the super PACs? I mean, I know you're against lobbyists, but it does seem that, you know, the Supreme Court was national, what was it, uh, when they ruled that it was okay to have super PACs. How do you feel about the uh, super PACs? Uh, First, a term limitation. Okay, theoretically, the forefathers who set up the Constitution did not have any intention, in my opinion, for a person to serve as a career politician. Two years of Congress. You could come from your plantation, work two years, give to the government, go back home. Someone else with new ideas could come in. They could go for another two years. But what we have evolved to is career politicians. Why do we have career politicians? What makes it feasible? lobbyists make it feasible for career politicians. And go to your second question, PACs. No, I don't believe in PACs. My campaign is going to be financed by myself for $5,000. Okay, my opponents look for two to three million dollars. Where does the two or three million dollars come from? It doesn't come from the local people in South Carolina. It comes from your PACs. It comes from people who, in fact, like I said earlier, the lobbyists get together in a room and they decide from there um, manufacturing company or their employer, what they want as far as a bill. They know who they can get to put the bill on the table. They know who will endorse and who will vote for the bill. And if you're over here, they already have votes in place, and it's going to hurt you in your re-election, they're going to vote against it. So it's all pre-planned. It's a pre-show, and this guy's in trouble. It has got to stop. Until we get back to the basics, it ain't going to happen. So if I can get to Washington, I can assure you I am a renegade. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, the stand on uh, the super PACs. Wasn't the super PACs uh, invented by the courts to counter the unions? Because <coughs> unions were able to put all the money they wanted to. Now the business people can put all the money they want to. I agree that was the foundation for it, but two um, wrongs don't make it right. Okay. What I'd like to see is limitations that can be spent by the politicians. Do you need to spend $3 million to run for the second district House Representative in South Carolina? I don't think so. Like I said earlier, the maximum I'm going to spend is $5,000. i am getting a pretty good uh, bang from above on the $5,000. This is what I'm talking about is the basic things we need to change within this district to get it back to where we need to be. And then what I'm looking at is the children. Like I said the other day, I have six grandchildren and I'm ashamed of the future that we're leaving them. I showed a picture the other day. I said, look, I have six grandchildren, okay? A picture's worth a thousand words. This is 6,000 words of why I'm running for the third time in this district. There, any other questions? So, so if I want to take out a, a, a sizable chunk of my fortune, 
and uh, and run radio ads in your favor, you would have a problem with that. Uh, Bill, look, you need uh, David, so you, you say you have a fortune. I put it this way. I well, you call oh, up, yes, and I know you've got thousands of friends. <laughs> call up your thousands of friends and tell them to look at my little website, which is Bill Black for Congress. Well, I think that would get more bang for the buck. You wouldn't have to spend well, your money. Well, if I call on my home phone instead of my cell phone, and that cost me some money, you would have a problem with that? I'm hoping that you've done with um, one of the Verizons that gives you <laughs> unlimited calling power within South Carolina. Well, so it's, it's a fee. It's a fee. The, the point it. is, you don't want me exercising my First Amendment right. You can exercise it it's any way that you want to, but the thing about it, you must put on there that this is not paid for or does well, not that's a, come that from the like bill. Not really. No, the, not see, really. the, the, the super PACs don't have to report how much they're spending. That's the difference between regular Good, and regular. That's, that's the way it is in a free country. Right. Uh, whereas regular, it, the regular, correct me if I'm wrong, Bill, the regular uh, donations to a politician, they have to report that. They don't have to report what the PACs are. So if you, if Phil receives money from you or I, um, or right. a, no, a group the PACs are independent right. expenditures. Right. If, and and but, in a but free if country, that's called expressing yourself. But, but, but organized or not. if I, if you or I donate to Phil and he has to report that, well, you gave you and I gave him maybe a hundred dollars or twenty-five dollars or a thousand dollars, or he raised it from from some local fundraising. He has and he has to report that, but he doesn't have to report that Walmart gave him. Uh, well, yeah, he does. You know, yeah. they have, they have Walmart gave yeah, Walmart spent it on their own. They wouldn't give it to him. They right. give it to the campaign. They would just. To spend it on their own, they would right. buy the airtime on right. their own, right? The right. Advertiser. So that's obviously has nothing to do with him at all. Right. It might be for him, but it has nothing to do with him. Yeah. He, they go out and say, okay, like him and I say, okay, let's pull our money together and buy some radio time for Phil. That has nothing to do with him. We're deciding to do that. Now we've just become a pack, maybe not a super pack, because our, <laughs> our funds are quite a bit. Uh, no, they can be a super pack. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I take him out of the super pack. Right? But, uh, put him back. but I'm saying if we decide, hey, we want to help him, we want to do that. So we're going to put our money together and buy radio time for him. Now we've just become a pack, and we're helping him out. But he has no uh, nothing to do with what we're doing. We're deciding to do that independently of him. So obviously he doesn't have to report it. But now some people might say, and, and I'm not totally pro super pack, but I'm just trying. Uh, the, the point of it is. We have that right to do that. We should have that right to express what we believe. I mean, things get irritating. I agree with that. But to jump on and say, well, now we want to take away our right to express what we want to say because people say we have more money than that super PAC or those people, I'm kind of leery about that because it's a slippery slope to say now we can't. Well, who's next then? Well, it goes between it's either moral or ethical. you got to look at it from the standpoint. It be <coughs> ethical but not moral from the standpoint. Okay. The way I look at it, and I said earlier, David, you have an email, you have a website. I can get more mileage out of you with contacting your friends and ask them just to view my a website. That's the bottom line. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Let's get a round of applause. Thank you.